I wanted Amy to pop into the screen here. <laughs> anyway, she's saying hello to all of you. Um, um, yeah, we're not muted, right? You can hear me okay? Somebody give me a thumbs up if you can hear okay. So, but, uh, so uh, we greet you and we, um, we, I don't know how to say, I was talking to Rob yesterday and I can't tell you how much it blesses our heart to know that you know, you all pray for God's work in Nigeria and that you, you know, Rob said that you often pray about the people and the events over there. And that's just such a tremendous encouragement. Um, I happened to be reading in Acts chapter uh, 14 yesterday, the end of the chapter. Um, and in verse uh, 27, when they had come together and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened a door, opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And so I, I think it's a wonderful and healthy thing to be able to uh, share what, you know, what you're participating in. And uh, it still astounds me. I, I have to actually keep a physical record of it. Uh, but I have been given the privilege of going to Nigeria 22 times uh, in, in, since 2007. So it just seems like that's impossible. Um, but by God's grace, uh, I hope to go again. Um, the, the visa that I have lasts for two years and there's such a pain in the neck to get that I try to make as much use of it as I can. And so I had thought about going in March, but there was some definite complications. So I'm hoping to go somewhere toward uh, the end of May or early June to go back again. And uh, I know that uh, Rob said you even read uh, some of the emails that I send out kind of of what God is doing there. Um, but I think the one of the things that I would like to share is God always throws a new curveball. It seems like every time I go and uh, I, I, I will get to it in a minute, but I had an opportunity to minister to uh, a group of people that I had no intention or plan uh, of, of getting together with. Uh, I usually try to spend all of my time with the orphan boys and the widows. And my goal is to uh, get them into the word of God, to try to get them to see the power and the value of the word of God for each of them as individuals. And uh, I, I try to get them to let, let them see that the Holy Spirit can take the word and speak uh, directly to them through the scriptures. So this particular trip, when I was with the boys, uh, they wanted to uh, go through this little booklet that uh, I had put together on the Gospel of John. I showed you that kind of uh, summary of, of the whole gospel, but it, it's a little booklet that I put together on John, and I did it uh, for the first time in 2009 to the leaders in the ministry, and then for some reason, there seems to be an upsurge in the use of that. So I kind of did an overview of the whole booklet to the boys in the whatever two and a half weeks I had with them. And that was uh, very encouraging. And they even gave them a, um, uh, this isn't my style, but not, uh, Nigerians like to do tests and exams. So they had them do a little quiz at the end of the time. And I was astounded. They gave me the copies and I was astounded how much the boys had retained. I would have done it as an open book thing, but they actually had to do it from memory. And I was astounded at how much that they had actually taken in. And so that was tremendously encouraging. Uh, in the time that I spend with the widows, uh, we uh, we uh, go we were going through different portions in the Gospel of John, and uh, I just I, I love the time with them, and they are uh, they are such willing learners. Both groups like extended time. Like with the boys, 
uh, it, it's tough to fit me in in their schedule. And a couple of times I said to them, I think I even noted this in some of my uh, emails. Uh, I said, well, you know, do you want to do just a half an hour of Bible study today? And they would say, no, let's do an hour. And like in the U.S., you'd say, well, you want to do a half an hour? And they would say, how about five minutes? So it's quite a radical difference in attitude. So the time with the boys was fantastic. Uh, the time with the widows was a blessing as always. And they usually a lot, at least an hour to an hour and a half of Bible study, uh, five days a week with the women. And, and uh you know, my goal is to get them to participate and to share what they're seeing and learning and ask questions. And, and I think we've got enough comfort there that they're, we often get off onto other subjects, which is fine with me because, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's what's relevant to them. And so, but the, and then I also mentioned uh, when I was speaking that I have this privilege of going to a prison for young people. And, and what's really different about it is most of them are Muslim. And, you know, there might be 25, 30 young people there, a few girls are there, uh, but most of them are Muslim background. And it's just a tremendous privilege to try to illustrate to them that Jesus is not just a good teacher. I often use a Lord Liar Lunatic approach from C.S. Lewis, that there is no fourth category. You can't have Jesus as a good teacher and yet this lunatic who says that he's God. Those two can't fit together. And God has seemed to use that with those young people, but many of them, uh, according to one of the young men that was a prisoner there, said many of them have put their faith in Jesus, but they won't confess it much like Nicodemus and the religious leaders for fear of persecution or even amongst them, believe it or not. Uh, if they go back to their village and you find out they're a Christian, the leaders may seek to kill them. You, we don't think of that in the 21st century that that kind of stuff would actually happen, but they can be put to death. So many of them, if they get saved, they will go to a different location and start to grow in their faith. Uh, but the the uh, the curveball that got through this time was uh, there's a young man, uh, his name is uh, Joshua, and he had a heart for the young people in the city of Joss that were getting into drugs and drinking and stealing and all kinds of terrible stuff. And so he kind of goes to the worst areas of the city and he ministers there. And there's just this tremendous revival that's going on amongst these young people. So this last trip, I was asked to do something I'd never done before. They, they, they like this little booklet as a uh, tool for discipling. It's a way to get people into the word and it has some kind of continuity to it. And so uh, we printed several hundred copies of it. and then uh, they asked me to do a one day seminar to teach the people that are doing the discipling how to use the booklet to disciple others. So I've never done that. I've taught the book or you know, taught John, I've taught it through the book, but I've never taught them how to use the book. So I was apprehensive and often I'll say no to things that take me away from spending time with the widows and orphans but we decided to do it on a one day basis. And so I agreed to do it. And so we did it and about 50 people showed up and that was a surprise to me because often, you know, and I don't care if it's two people, I, I don't, numbers don't matter to me. Uh, but where I was blown away is at the end of the time, the man who organized this pointed to a person and said, okay, how many people are you discipling? And one guy said, 30. One, how, how many are you discipling? Uh, 50. How many are you discipling? 90. How many are you discipling? 100. And he went through just a bunch of the people. And I was just absolutely shocked that, you know, these people mean business. And they're really trying to 
teach folks to really put the Lord at the center of their lives. And so they're using this little booklet as a tool. And, and so one of the things that I've been challenged about, and, and I ask your prayer on this, is um, it seems as though there's still even more of a demand to keep printing these, but it's not, it's not particularly cheap to print. And then the next thing that has happened is, uh, I don't know if you all would be aware that, uh, you know, we think of these people sometimes as less privileged than we are and less educated, but most Nigerians speak three languages. And I always tell them I just butcher one. So uh, they are far from uh, ignorant people, but the tribal language of the area is called Hausa and they are translating the little booklet into Hausa to help those that are not as comfortable with the English. And so I'm not sure where that's going to go either, but I appreciate your prayers on that. And so, um, but that's kind of just a brief overview. Um, uh, the irony, I think many of you would recall, is that the Canadian couple that I stay with that are theirs, they took on the goal of keeping me healthy because I got sick that many years ago. And so they're very careful about their food. But in their efforts to keep me healthy, each of them came down with the COVID while I was staying with them, which is not exactly the way of keeping me healthy. But I don't understand it. Uh, but I never got the COVID and by God's grace, when I left, I had the negative test and was able to come home only to find, well, I knew before I came home, my wife had COVID as well. So no matter where I went, it was all around me, but somehow God preserved me. And I trust that that was in part due to your prayers. And so uh, just, I, and I have to admit at times, I, you know, when I, came toward the end of the trip and I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna test positive. What am I gonna do and whatever, you know, I start to hit the panic button a little bit and, uh, but God was faithful as always. And, uh, you know, had a nice uh, trip home and, and a quiet week uh, kind of hanging with my wife that week. And so it was a, a tremendous trip. And again, just, I just, I thank you all for your prayers and your support. So I'll end it there. And was I supposed to pray or is somebody else going to pray at this point? Oh, I'm going to pray for you, brother. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our brother's ministry. We thank you for uh, his willingness to go out and serve the people of Nigeria and in particular uh, orphans and widows and uh, his willingness to um, go over this book uh, of discipleship and um, do this seminar when he was there. We thank you for preserving him. Uh, we don't know how, Lord, but to be in a house uh, where people have COVID and he still remained a negative test. Uh, we thank you for that. And he was able to come home on time uh, we thank you, Lord, for many things in his life. We, we, we know he wants to go back soon, and he thinks it's going to be difficult in March, but maybe around May or so. Uh, we just ask that there's um, uh, less of a travel restriction and, and more of a, uh, an easier time for him to get over there. Uh, we just pray that there's no uh, surge in, in COVID cases. To, to restrict air travel. And we just pray that um, every second he's there, that you use him mightily. Uh, you fill him with the Holy Spirit. And, and Lord, just please uh, guide every step um, when he gets off that plane to when he gets back on it. And uh, we thank you for his service to you and his willingness to serve you. And we thank you um, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. So do you Amen. want- Thank you. And uh, I wonder if there are any who would have a question or two, even from online. 
uh, that you might uh, really want to ask. And uh, in the meantime, uh, I think we're trying to be a little bit like the Nigerian because we're getting to an hour and a half here and <laughs> we're really enjoying a blessing. So we don't mind it a bit. <laughs> but anyway, some may be leaving and that's okay. So uh, any questions from our audience, either online? Oh, we have one here in the chapel, yes? Could you come here so it can be heard over there too? Yes. Just, uh, asking, do they use the talk Bible in any of the Nigerian languages? Do you use the talking Bible? I am not familiar with that. So uh, I would say no. So I need to learn a little bit more about that. It's an audio Bible that uh, operated from solar uh, panels. <laughs> I, I can say that I know, I think they call it, what did they call it? The pocket preacher or something like that. They, I know that they make recordings uh, of the scriptures and they give it to uh, mostly to the Fulani people who are a Muslim group and that they can uh, hear the Bible in their own language. But I have never used something like that. Okay. Another question is uh, the book for discipleship. Uh, what kind of book that you use? Uh, is it available here in our assembly? Um, it can be. I mean, I can send a, a, you know, it's just a, um, it's about 60 pages and it's kind of an overview of the Gospel of John, uh, really based on the teaching of that brother David Gooding. And so I just tried to put it in a format that people could use it. Uh, but I can certainly uh, send a, a, a PDF copy or a Microsoft Word copy. I can send that to Rob and anybody who wants to use it. Uh, praise the Lord. I think they're interested. Yes. The, the reason I am asking is, uh, you know, I understand from you that it's a, it's a very good book and it is effectively used. The, can we duplicate this in India? Uh, is yeah, I mean, again, if it's useful... Really what it's supposed to do is kind of give you the feel of the Gospel of John. Uh, and as I said, most of it is a reiteration of what David Gooding taught. And, uh, you know, we, I can send a copy to Rob and if, if it's of any use to anybody, uh, please feel free. Thank you. That seems to be the answer that's fine uh, with our brother here. Do we have another question from another brother or even a sister, if you'd like? Uh, Eric, just a couple quick questions. Uh, one is, uh, what first led you to Nigeria? What was how did the Lord work in your life there? And then secondly, um, the uh, if you could for and maybe even deal with this first, uh, the logistics of getting there, how you fly there the transportation on the road to get to Joss, and then uh, if you could just give people a sense of how long it takes to get there and then what okay. happens. Uh, your, your first question, I missed part of that. Your first question? First was, question was, how did the Lord bring it about so that you had an interest in Nigeria? Okay. Um, well, I take absolutely no credit for it. Uh, my daughter, Rachel, graduated nursing school in 2007 and she said, Dad, I'd like to do a short-term mission trip. So we went to visit uh, a man named Peter Fretheim, whom I had known from years before in high school. He came to the Lord uh, through the Ministry of Young Life, and he ended up a missionary in Joss, Nigeria. So it seemed like the logical place to go, and I went with my daughter and thought that was that. And then about two years later, Alex Leal got a hold of me. He says, I hear you went to Nigeria. You want to go again? And I said, sure. And then he calls me a year later. You want to go back again? Yeah, sure. And that led to 22 times I've been there. So it's really of the Lord. But as, as I got into it, in the beginning, you kind of go see the big picture of everything. But as the second time Alex and I went, we spent most of our time with the orphan boys, the high school orphan boys, and that's what really started to tug on my heart. And so I made them my priority and the widows. And so instead of kind of seeing everything, I, I zeroed in on that. And, and so many of them will call me from Nigeria because, uh, and then they hang up and I call them back because 
it doesn't cost them any money for me to call them. And so God has given me a way to keep in touch with many of them, even when I'm back here in the United States. Uh, and your second question was the trip. Uh, it's what I call a marathon. Uh, and I, I made the stupid choice of moving, no, I'm kidding, but by moving to Colorado, I add another four or five hours to the trip. But um, it, it's usually uh, door to door getting there uh, about 40 some odd hours because you, you know, you go to the airport, you wait, you get on, you take time in Paris, you fly into Abuja, you have to stay at a guest house and then it's about a five or six hour ride from uh, Abuja to Jos. And so, um, I don't know, I feel like, you, you know, you're running a marathon and, you know, you're mile five, you're mile 10 and so forth. And somehow God gives me the grace to, to, to just do it, but you kind of pace yourself. Uh, but, but the Lord has been incredibly gracious to me because many times I pray for an empty seat next to me, just so I don't have to play, you know, the elbow game with people, you know, about who gets the armrest, you know. And many, many times God has given me, you know, room to kind of just relax and, and uh, get ready for the next phase. So does that answer the question enough, Rob? Okay. We have any other questions before uh, we get excused to, you know, online? We certainly have had a robust uh, question period and we appreciate your lengthy and detailed answer as well as a wonderful opening of the word and chapter seven it's enlightened and, and blessed us as we think of all the processes that were involved there and the interchanges so we thank you for being with us today we feel like we're just right across the uh, uh, right across the pews as you might say oh, praise the lord for that that's that very much thank you all right we'll, we'll close the, then at this time again the heavenly father we praise you for your blessings and your enrichment of our hearts and souls in the Lord as we meditate upon the things that are being done in your name and in your power in many places. In a demonstration here with our brother Eric, we pray that you would keep him and care for him in the future days as we acknowledge our dependence upon thee in all of these things and praise your name for how you work things out in a wonderful, marvelous way and will in our own individual lives as we enter into the experience of sharing the Lord Jesus with others unafraid and uh, blessed in the knowledge of thy word and ready to go and we thank you in all these things we pray for a safe journey home and for those online we pray thy blessing as well in their different needs in the Lord's name amen